Hey guys, Jason here with Drones Etc. And I'm here today with the new X5 series camera on the Inspire One Pro. Pretty excited about this. I'm an Inspire One owner myself. And so I was obviously you know, excited to see what the next iteration would look like, what the footage would look like coming out of this Micro Four Thirds camera. So I'm gonna show you some of my footage that I've got over the past couple weeks as I've been testing it out and let you see for yourself. The image coming out of the new X5 camera, I've noticed quite a difference from what I've been doing with the X3. I've just been impressed with the detail that I'm actually getting out of it. It's also a 16 megapixel camera, so the images, the actual still images that you get out of it are pretty impressive. If you're upgrading your Inspire One with the new X5 camera, then you'll also need to get this new Zenmuse X5 vibration absorbing board. The camera is attached to the gimbal like the X3 and attaches to the plate in two ways. There's a little notch that fits into a part here on the plate and then it locks in the same way as the X3. So you line up that notch and then lock it. The other thing that's different about the X1 Pro is it has new quick release props. The X5 camera has an interchangeable Micro Four Thirds lens mount that is compatible with some third-party lenses. And this is the DJI 15mm lens that comes with the X5 camera on the Inspire One Pro. It comes with a lens hood and has 46mm diameter threads for attaching filters. On the performance side, the new Inspire One Pro is heavier in the air and you can feel that as you're sort of controlling it. The other minor trade-off is battery life. Because the X5 camera is a little heavier, the battery life just isn't as long as when it has the lighter X3 camera on it. On the new Inspire One X5 camera, you also have aperture control in the DJI app. So here in the app, to pull up your exposure settings, you click on this menu button, which pulls up your exposure parameters. Right now you can see it's in auto mode, but if I switch to manual, You'll see that brings up my aperture dial. So you have a lot more control than the previous Inspire's camera, which only had ISO and shutter speed. So this allows you to keep a much more constant shutter speed. I like to keep my shutter speeds pretty uniform. If I'm shooting at 30p, then I like to be shooting at 1 60th. And if I'm shooting at 24, then I like to be shooting at 1 50th, just to keep that more cinematic motion blur. With the X5, you also have the ability to dial in your focus from the app. You can click between the autofocus and manual focus up here, and that brings up the focus dial. It goes from a macro level to infinity, and you can fine tune it at different distances in between. The other way to adjust the focal distance is from the remote itself. So you can press this control button on the back and then use the gimbal dial to adjust the focus. And if you watch the dial there, you can see how it moves as I'm adjusting the dial on the controller. I'll be honest, I think uh, you know, it doesn't work that great and I wouldn't rely on it. But it's nice to be able to just set your focal distance and keep it locked while shooting. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that and got something out of it. I know I'm enjoying the new X5 and hopefully you do too. Don't forget to subscribe to Drones Etc. Uh, YouTube videos. We're going to be showing a lot more of these tutorials and product previews. So subscribe and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I'm Jason with Drones Etc. and I'm here to do a little demonstration of the Inspire One. It comes in this pretty great case and when you pull it out, realize it's in travel mode. 